Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another case study on the channel. Welcome, Benji. Cheers, Connor. Thanks for having me. Super excited to have this young legend on the channel. He's uh, only just found out that he hit his massive month of 13,400. Is that right? Yep. In a single month, as a 19 year old, he just turned 20, but 19 years old when he hit it, which is absolutely unreal because I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this would have no idea what you were doing at 19 years old and it's definitely nothing close to that. I know I, I sure it wasn't. So I'm super excited to have him on the channel and really dive into his story. So, dude, welcome to the channel. Uh, you've just got off from a flight from, where was it again, Brisbane? Brisbane, yes. Big cool. What were you doing up there? Uh, my uncle's wedding, actually. It was great. Very exciting. You, you mentioned as well like that uh, you got inspired by somehow or yeah being exposed to you know more upper class environment as well as people and seeing that lifestyle it definitely like once you're in there you live it it's something that's definitely motivation for the next month or so yeah and I think <laughs> you mentioned as well like kind of how starstruck it's been like meeting someone in the online space in mm. person and how different that is and how interesting it is and obviously being in the room that we're in is, is a pretty amazing thing for you to do especially when you're really young and haven't experienced anything like that uh, we're going to dive into all of that we're going to go very very deep but it wasn't of course all sunshine and rainbows with benji as you guys all know with everyone in the channel it's all pretty now but it wasn't pretty at the start so no. let's let's go all the way back before you met me. I know we've only been working together for about five months now, but you've been in the space for eight months total. Yep. Let's start from the start, man. Like, were you doing anything before high ticket sales? Did you try different business models? Like, what were you doing before that? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like, I've always jumped around from thing to thing, like looking into drop shipping, never getting into it, looking into running my own agency never getting into it and honestly glad I didn't because without sales you can't kind of get into that in my opinion personally mm. uh, but before all this like how it all started really was I got my first gig well actually I joined a network and met a guy Sam mm -hmm. who I then got my first role with and that was an American offer overnight and that was definitely not a great offer so how that kind of looked was, well, to be honest, I did not book my first meeting for five weeks. Yeah. So it took me five weeks to book my first meeting, but, and that was working overnight from starting at 11 p.m. and finishing at about 6 a.m. And that was not a very <laughs> good offer, but the it was definitely, shift. yeah, no. It was something to kind of get the foot in the door and then leverage that offer for the next kind of thing. That's where it started. Um, but yeah, I mean, so you mentioned you did drop tripping, right? I tried to get into it for how long? Probably about three to six months. Did you do any courses? What did you do? Take me through like, uh, and explain to the guys as well, like what you did with that and, and what that looked like. Yeah. So I actually just got onto YouTube, started looking into like a bunch of different products to kind of sell. I uh, had no idea what I was doing. To be honest, I was pretty young, maybe around 17, when I kind of got into all this type of stuff. And I just had no idea. Never bought any courses, no guidance, nothing like that. Just simple YouTube videos that show one piece of a puzzle here and one piece there, but nothing that ever kind of put me forward in any way, I don't think. What was the mindset behind not ever getting a mentor and just using free information? To be honest, I didn't know it kind of existed until I came across like a few different networks, a few different people's offer, mm. and then getting exposure to other people's networks, other people's offers. I kind of then got that exposure and that's when I really kind of saw the logic behind it all. What went from there to high ticket sales though? kind of understood the fact that if you can't sell anything, like how are you going to run your own business? So if you can't even mm. sell for someone else's business at low risk because you're a commission only rep, I don't feel that 
you know, why should I be able to sell for my own business if I can't even do it for someone else's? Mm. So that's kind of my opinion behind it all. It's not always the case, but I definitely do think to be successful in other areas, you need to be, well, you need to have proof that you can actually sell for someone else. I'd agree. And so your thought process was like, I want to start a business in the future. Yeah. So I want to learn the, I guess, the most foundational skill on which businesses are built up of, upon of, which is sales. Exactly. That was your thought process. Yeah. That makes sense to our conversation earlier. And so we, we met through some interesting circumstances. And if we're following the timeline correctly, you've been in the industry for about eight months, right? Up yeah. until last month. And you had been setting for five weeks on an offer that wasn't very good. So what happened after that and, and how did you end up finding me? Yeah, so how I found you was actually through one of your good friends, Daniel. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually bought a mentorship call off him because I remember watching some of his content and seeing that he was really, he was exactly where I wanted to be very young and he's already gone through that process. Mm. So I actually bought a mentorship call off him and he kind of guided me to you and that's where we got in touch. And then ever since there, it's, it's been going up. <laughs> it's been but, going up, it has been going up. But basically the thought process behind like actually well, having that discussion with Daniel and then that relating to you was his whole thing that he was kind of saying to me is, you know, download Connor's brain. Like he's he's doing, you know, X, Y, Z a month. If you can download his brain, turn it into yours, then, you know, that's, in my opinion, the quickest path to success. And that's what I followed and now I've taken his advice on and <laughs> followed those steps. Absolutely. I think uh, when, when Daniel messaged me about you, bro, he was like, look, I got this guy, Benji. He's a young, young up and coming gun. He's, he's, he's got what it, what it takes. He just needs the vehicle. He needs the, the place to put his energy into. But it seems like he's, he's struggling with the right way to go and the right guidance with it is like, can you help him? And I think we didn't even have a call, right? You even came to me and you're like, bro, I'm going to tell you, like, I don't have all the funding up front, but like, yeah. I'll scrape together. I'll make it work eventually. What was running through your head, man, where you're just like, I'm going to take that risk. I've never even met this guy. I'm trusting him blindly through Daniel. What, mm. what was the next logical step? Because, I mean, that is a pretty big commitment to make, right? Yeah. Especially, I won't disclose the amount of the pricing, but uh, that's a big commitment. Like, yeah. what was your thinking around that? Like, why were you just, like, ready to go? Well, I suppose I'm not the same as, you know, everyone else. A lot of people's mindsets are a bit different to mine. But if I, I kind of look at it as, you know, you're already succeeding in that path, like, why not? Like, you've got proof of concept, you've done it before, like, and you're getting those referrals in the first place for that vehicle that you've actually done mm -hmm. and doing a little bit of research on yourself and seeing that you're legit, you're a real person, and you've actually gone through, you know, that whole process. In my mind, paying someone like yourself to take the step in that direction to learn from and actually just take your skill set, turn it into my own. If you can do X, Y, Z a month and I can learn from you, I don't see why I can't then do that as well. So if it's, you know, X, Y, Z investment, but then in turn I'm making however much a month, to me it's a logical decision that I think if you're in that position, you should make. It's very smart. And I think for a lot of the younger guys that are actually listening to this, Adopting that mindset is really, really key. And, you know, even though I work with my first mentor who was, I'm grateful that he helped me get to where I am today to a degree, but wasn't good. Let's just put it that way. It wasn't good. It was 7.5K and it was not a light investment, but I still had that same belief as you when I was a lot younger. I was about 18 at the time when I made my mm. first mentor investment. And I was like, there's somebody who clearly knows something that I don't. Why don't I just pay them the money to get there infinitely faster? So Exactly. I really like that frame of thinking. And to give the guys context, before you went all in on high ticket sales, what were you actually doing before that? Yeah, for sure. So I was actually, well, I have been, I worked at Woolworths from 14 years old to 18 years old mm. for four years 
just you know saving money, putting it towards certain investments, whatever. And then from 18 to now, um, it's just been factory job, full time, like from anywhere from 40 to 70 hours a week. Uh, just getting that overtime in kind of to pay for those type of investments. And I actually did worked in a factory for about 16 months doing anywhere minimum minimum 40 to most weeks on average 60 hour 60 hour weeks seven days like there was times where I didn't have a day off in like I'd have one day off a month yeah, kind of thing crazy. just crazy getting the overtime in and then putting it towards courses and mentorship and other things like that but that's what I was doing to put it short that's pretty intense in comparison to what you do now now I talk about and we talked about this with Saxon and, and all my other guys that are crushing it, is that it's not all sunshine and rainbows, even in high ticket sales, right? No, it's no. not easy. It's, you, you're going to fail a bunch of times. You're going to make a ton of mistakes. You're going to lose a lot of money. Like this is what happens, unfortunately. 100%. And I've come up with a bit of a, I guess an idea that it's more like the industry tax, right? Yeah. You know how Dan talks about as well. I'm not an expert in crypto, but you know, the market tax, right? You've got to pay yeah. your tuition to the market. And it's the same thing with high ticket sales and making money online. Yeah. You got to make the mistakes. You got to flop a couple of business models. You got to go the wrong way a couple of times. Maybe you pick a bad mentor, which lucky you got me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's super interesting. And so if we were looking at the, the type of offer that you're selling because a lot of the guys that watch my YouTube channel may or may not really be aware of like what type of things you can be selling. Like what is the type of offer that you're selling at the moment? What's a price at and everything mm. like that? Yeah, so the offer I'm selling right now is marketing for tradies and it's a $12,000 ticket price uh, and I'm the closer for that offer. And it's a tough gig in the sense that, you know, it's hard to get the tradies to show up. But within that, like, I think it's kind of taught me a lot of lessons as well because wouldn't, you wouldn't think that, you know, I don't want to make assumptions here, but tradies are hard to get on the phone. Very much so. Um, and working in that environment with tradies, especially for a ticket price of $12,000, uh, which can seem like quite a lot for certain people, is actually a real, taught me a lot just working on that offer. And I think made me a much better salesman as a result of it. But that's what I'm selling. Yeah. And it's really interesting to see that transition from what you'd sold in the past with that five-week offer. Because like, what were you selling for that five weeks? Uh, so with that first offer I was doing, it was a... Cold calling? Yeah, it was cold calling. <laughs> yeah. It was cold calling Americans for this tech. It was a very, it's a new tech, very advanced something that's probably going to take a while to explain but yep. to put it short it was a very advanced tech that i was selling to americans quite high ticket price and it was pretty hard to sell for me at the time that's for sure were you just outbound dialing out complete cold outbound dialing here's a list google lead scraper and just working through it extremely rough man and uh we talked about this on a coaching call because it was really funny because Benji came on a call, right? And I hadn't seen him for a while. He had messaged me, he hadn't come to coaching calls. He just popped on and he's like, oh yeah, by the way, it just made like 13K this month. And I was like, what and how? <laughs> and I remember you were, you were explaining to the guys on the community call because I was really kind of emphasizing the point of how important a good offer is. Yes. Do you want to walk us through what you learned there and I guess some lessons you can share with the guys? Yeah, 100%. So within Connor's training, he preaches, you know, offer is the most, the, the best thing you can kind of leverage in sales. And it's very much the truth. And me being with my experience, I have been on now, this is my third offer that I've currently hopped on to. And the first two, I was on for the first eight months of my uh, experience. So I've been in sales for coming up to nine months now. And the first eight months within sales, I made a total of $1,850 in the first eight months. And it wasn't until I realized like, okay, I'm not that bad 
or in my opinion, at that eight month mark, I felt like I wasn't that bad of a salesman. But the lesson I hadn't learned was the offer I was on was terrible, to put it short. And until I learned that lesson and actually changed offer from my previous one to the one I'm on now, within the first six weeks on that offer, or within the past month, I made more money in that one month times five than the first eight months combined, just from changing from one offer to another. And that's a massive breakthrough to have, and it took a long time for me to really learn that. And that's why you guys will see me on the YouTube channel, I preach this all the time. It's like, yes, your sales skills are important. We all know that. We know, obviously, the whole career is based around you being able to perform. But unless you're on a good offer and an opportunity that allows you to make the money that you want, it's going to be near impossible, mm. right? It's like if you're cold calling, if you're cold messaging f business owners trying to sell something complicated, like you even mentioned before, it's like it's going to take me a while to sit here and explain what I'm going to sell. Yeah. That is going to be difficult to sell. If you have exactly. one, And if there is no massive gauge interest in the market of like this is really easy to sell, people really want this, Compare in comparison to the tradesman offer that you're on right now and for the non-Australian people, tradesman, tradie is just like a painter, plumber, uh, the usual gist. And these guys really need what you offer, mm. right? Do you want to talk about like types of problems that I guess the type of customers or prospects you deal with have and I guess how you solve them? Yeah, for sure. So basically the customers I speak to, their main problems are just relying on word of mouth, referrals, or some partnerships that aren't consistently providing them leads or jobs, or they're actually buying work from lead aggregate sources that just can't give them a consistent flow of leads. So the main problem is that they're not enough inflow of jobs. So my company comes in there, fills the problem of, you know, getting advertised onto Facebook, Instagram, making sure the website's all optimised for SEO, making sure you Google, you've got Google Ads running for specific keywords that your business should be targeting in your area, as well as your local SEO and just Google SEO in general, which a lot of tradies don't have next to none of that set up at all. And getting them set up on those platforms and providing that marketing for them, you know, if they are doing an, a bathroom that costs anywhere from twenty to $30,000 and they can set up some keywords that cost you pennies and get a $30,000 job offer, then you can kind of really see the value in why marketing is so important for some of these companies, especially with a ticket price that high kind of thing. I can completely understand that as we we're talking about before we hit record is that I myself have sold something similar that was like $30,000. And it's, it's a very interesting style of selling. It's yep. still going to be very around what I teach and what I've learned and, and probably what you've learned around in the general space. But you have to be very slappy with them. Yeah. You have to get, you really have to give it to them and they won't respect you if you don't. Yeah, for sure. I completely agree. The tradies show up rate is very low. The mm -hmm. industry standard is actually about 50%. So if you're not really diving deep on, you know, that sales process within your discovery and actually slapping them around a bit, holding them accountable and getting that cost of inaction from them, mm. then they're just not going to show up for the call at all. So in that sense, yeah, it's a very hard industry and kind of really got to take your sales game to a whole nother level and make sure the whole process is engineered in the right way. I think that's good and it gives the guys an insight to what you can sell in the industry, how expensive it was, because how much did you say it was again? $12,000. Okay, so not a cheap thing, guys. And your commission is about 1200 right? Yeah, so 1200 to maybe a little bit more if I have some bonuses kind of thing. Nice one. So picture this, right? You sit on a phone call and you make $1,200 per sale. Yes. It's pretty insane to imagine, right? Because yeah. in comparison to your old job, one sale could maybe even make you a week's salary. Yes, and that's exactly what it is really. <laughs> so I remember working at my factory job, I could do 
my 6.30 to 2.30 shift, Monday to Friday, work 12 hours on Saturday, the 12 hours on Sunday, and after taxes, that was only $1,500. And I'm doing, you know, like 60 hours a week doing that. So being able to make almost that same amount just in one sale, and maybe even more if I've got multiple sales that week for bonuses mm. is pretty crazy. And I think that's kind of the way to go, you know, if you're selling and making all this commission, yeah. it's much better than trading your time for, you know, all that money that could be better off. It's sometimes a bit of a shock, I'm sure, man, because like, I like to talk about this with everyone and people who have probably just watched a bunch of interviews and case studies in a row are probably sick of me saying this, but it's crazy to see how fast things can change, mm. right? From nothing to something and something to everything, right? Yeah. That's exactly how it feels because the mountain that you would have been climbing for a long time, man, no results, bad offers, beating against a brick wall, just getting bloody fists, no results. I know exactly what that feels like, right? You can hear it in the way that I'm speaking. Like I generally have been there and it's such an amazing thing to see your progression and all the guys' progression who are able to keep going up that mountain because it's not easy. You have setbacks, you have roadblocks, you have problems day after day, week after week. And it's having that persistency mindset to know that there is a peak. Mm. I'm up there. I've been there. I can show you to get there. But unless you keep rolling through and you keep moving forward, you're not going to have the momentum that carries you. Yeah. How... What was your mindset going through that where you're getting no results for months? Because just for context, Benji had been working me, working with me only the past five months. He's been in the industry for about eight. Yep. Uh, and so he's been crushing it in the time he's working with me. It's very typical and average. I see guys get the results he's getting within about zero to six months, especially as a complete beginner. What was that like, man, going through the trenches? Because I remember Benji on the coaching call, he was pouring his heart out, just trying to encourage some of the guys that have been on it for a while and maybe haven't been putting enough effort or getting the results that they've wanted. I know he knows what that feels like. So like, yeah. what was that like going through the trenches and constantly like, putting the work and, and not getting the result? Yeah, to put it short, it was terrible. Mm. <laughs> no, yeah. but I knew in the back of my mind that you know, the longer it's going to go on, well, like there's something pot clicked in my head. I was like, well, there's clearly a lesson I haven't learned yet. So I just need to learn that lesson. And it wasn't until I really took a step back, understood that it was the offer that was the problem is where I kind of learned that lesson and progressed in that sense. But like, I feel as well, you know, you might not see results all this time at all. You know, it could be six months, three months, 12 months, two years by all means. But I feel like the work that you are doing, like you may not see results today, but you know, then there's gonna be a day eventually. Like mm. you're getting one day closer at a time to that day where things do click and you do kind of see that progression. And from, you know, your zero to three months, you might see nothing. You might not even make a sale, which I did not. Damn. But all that work you're doing at the front, there's definitely, it's definitely the progress you need to kind of go through and lessons you need to learn before you can actually be a valuable salesman to a company. And I think not just even that, a thing I like to talk about all the time is, I haven't heard this said anywhere, so I'm gonna quote it as myself, is that, Something along the lines, I'm going to put your own quote, but it's like, I'm grateful for the journey and the setbacks and the problems that I've had along my lifetime, my timeline to build the character that I've needed to, to not only attain, but also retain the wealth and the success that I've built. Because when you rush success, when you get it too quickly, when you are not ready for it, what do we see, right? You lose it just like that. We see lottery winners do that all the time, right? You get this big influx of cash, you don't know how to handle it and you end up losing it. The journey that I've gone through, the journey that Benji's gone through, the journey that you may be going through is all serving a purpose. Like you have to be grateful for the lessons that you're learning. It may not look fantastic right now, but I can assure you what you're going through absolutely matters and is accumulating to an ultimate cause and, and really 
supporting your purpose. Let's put it that way. And so I think we even spoke about this briefly another time where it's also tough when your friends don't support you in this pursuit as well, right? Mm. Your circles, people don't know what you're doing, they don't understand it, pyramid scheme, scam, what are you doing? You're being taken for a ride along, right? We hear this all the time. What was that, what was that like for you, brother? Like, what was the, the situation there? Did your friends support you, did they not? Um, well, to be honest, I kind of keep it to myself as much as I can. Mm. Um, but I know for sure my mum, she's not too, uh, too happy about, well, she was never too happy about the whole process kind of I went through, seeing mm. that, you know, she'd see me work 60-hour weeks and then spend the whole entire paycheck on, you know, maybe one mentorship call or yeah. a course or something like that. And seeing that she, her watching me have no results for such a long time, mm. I'm like, oh, why should you do this? Why, why are you doing this? Da-da-da-da-da, whatever. But I think just showing up every day um, and, like, keep, you know, being persistent, it doesn't really matter eventually. Mm. But it wasn't too bad for me in sense That's good. of that, but I just kind of keep it to myself because better if no one knows, in my opinion. Mm. You know, just kind of work in the dark and... If no one knows, it's no one else's problem, really. I think it's very smart and very wise because when I was a lot younger, initially I wanted to tell everybody. Mm. I'm doing this thing, I'm starting this business, I'm doing this so, 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 and then everybody just, I just copped it for a long time. And this is for everyone that's watching this as well. Maybe you're just getting your start in high ticket sales, maybe you're just trying to make money online doesn't matter if you're Australian or wherever you are across the world, people aren't going to understand what you want to do. Mm. They're not going to understand your vision. They're not going to get it. And that's fine. And that's normal, right? Especially if your parents don't support you, right? This is, this is a really, really important thing that I think we should definitely talk about because when your parents tell you that it's not going to work, all they're doing is they just care for you. Right. Yeah, exactly. They want you to do well, right? They care. They, they care for your well-being. They don't want you to be, to be homeless, right? No parent wants that. They don't want you to be unsuccessful. They do want the best for you, but you absolutely have to understand because I know a lot of people will watch this video whose parents probably don't support them or their friends don't support them or maybe even your, your spouse, you know, your partner as well, right? This will happen, right? You have to understand that and Something that's really, really important, a lesson that I learned many years ago was that you can't pay attention or listen to the thoughts, opinions of others who are not where you want to be. Yeah. Because most people that are trying to attempt or have achieved what you want to achieve, you likely don't know in person. Yeah. Right? You can't get access to these types of people. You can't get access to mentors. You can't access entrepreneurs. You can't access these people who are way ahead of where you want to be because you have to access them through mentorships, yeah. right? You have to access them through masterminds, right? They're not going to be readily and, accessibly, uh, readily and accessible for you just to take advantage of and access, right? That's why you need to, if you have the chance, get the funding together, work with a mentor. I don't care if you're trying to get in high ticket sales or drop shipping or whatever it is. The mindset that Benji has, I really want to encourage because that's exactly the way that I thought many, many plus years ago. Like I've already spent 170, 180,000 mm. Australian dollars, by the way, uh, on training courses and mentorships in the past five years. And every little bit of information, good or bad, has paid dividends in some way. Yeah. Would you agree? Completely. And reason I do agree, like I personally, over the past... 12 months, probably spent about 30, between 30 to $40,000 on between mentorships, courses, networking groups, whatever that might be. Wow. And with every kind of bit that I've put into it has taught me a lesson, even if it was good or bad. Yeah. Like for example, getting like scammed, you know, that is a lesson that I paid for, but I'm glad I did because that's then taught me stuff for the future to kind of avoid. Mm. And, but every single thing and every person I've learnt off and being exposed to specific people, 
and all that type of stuff is completely worth every cent I've put into it, in my opinion. And just because of how much you can kind of grow in such short periods of time, being exposed to the right networks, the right people, having the right mentors, the right courses, all that type of stuff. So in my opinion, it's worth every single cent I've put in for sure. I think there's something that I don't talk about too often, but it's really important and we're talking about before we, we started recording is it's not just the access to the information or the strategy or the structure of the vehicle, or whatever it is. It's also access to the exposure because everyone that's watching this YouTube video, right, or wherever we're going to place this, you have a sum of beliefs your entire life up until now, right? Yeah. What you believe to be true is, is inevitably going to be true. Like if you had believed that you were going to work in, it was a factory, right? Yeah. In a factory your entire life, like that's would have been reality, right? Did you want to go to university? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> so just like me, right? I, I knew that I did not want to go to university. It didn't make sense to me because all well and fun, like, you know, if you're going to get degrees like a lawyer, a doctor and things like that, actual professions where you need that degree, well, then that's what I would suggest that you do. But if you're looking to be an entrepreneur, if you're looking to make a lot of money, what the general consensus of what I've seen of the people who make a lot of money, not only in this space, but across the world, are people who can stack a lot of skills mm. and get exposure to the right people at the right time with the right beliefs. Yeah. Because this conversation we're having right now, you coming here and meeting me in person is everything that's special about a mentorship and that is what has made the difference for me in the past. You know, going to Dubai and talking to some way more successful entrepreneurs than me, right? Making me feel like a little guppy compared to, <laughs> compared to what they do, right? In Australia, I'm becoming more successful and, but in comparison to a place like Dubai, I'm just a small fish, right? Everybody there's way more successful than me and it pushes me to another level. And for example, you being a part of a community mm. of people that are actually doing this, how much of an impact do you think that's had? Huge. And reason being is because you stop comparing yourself with people in your local area. Like you're starting to compare yourself with, you know, the best of the best. Yeah. And being able to kind of do so, like even if you're competing on age or if you're competing on skill set or, you know, where they are, like we all like look at everyone and go, oh, like everyone's competing at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, but I think it's, um, it's huge being able to have that exposure to those people because competing with those people, you just got to kind of stick and follow to the process. And also you learn, you're learning from them as well. They're learning, learning from you. And everyone's kind of just getting better and better and better at such an accelerated rate that without that community, it's just not possible. And it's the beliefs you get instilled in with as well. Because yeah. it's like most people, you know, especially, you know, that might be watching this YouTube video, are comparing themselves to the wrong people in a high case and a low case. High case being that, it's really easy online to compare your day one or your month three to somebody's year six, right? Yeah. We've all done it. Scrolling on Instagram, you see the 21 year old kids who are driving Lamborghinis, that are e-commerce dropshipping gurus. You see them in the buy, you see the flexi lifestyle, you see them traveling everywhere, first class, blah, 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 blah. We, we all see that, right? That is something that's really important that comparison is the biggest thief of joy. Yeah. And when you compare yourself to people that are so many years beyond you and have been doing it for a long period, duration time than you have, you can really do bad things to your mental health. And yeah. I know you probably have done it. I've definitely done it. The, these guys have, have definitely done it at some point in their, in their career or the time and trying to make money online. But the adverse side of things or the other side, polar opposite, is comparing yourself to the people that you're around. Yeah. Right. If you're comparing yourself to people from your hometown who make X per month and have this lifestyle, you're probably comparing yourself to the wrong people. If you have big goals, if you have big dreams, if you have big aspirations, you need to be comparing yourself to guys like Benji, right? 19 years old, 
making 13K a month. That's insane, <laughs> right? And I know it's happened so fast for you and I know it's, you, d you definitely feel like how shocked of like how crazy this is. Yeah. But dude, it's on another level. Like, yeah, yeah this is, <laughs> that's pretty much all I can say on that. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a great feeling to like finally hit that, you know, breakthrough $10,000 a month as well. Yeah. Because it's just crossing those belief barriers and exposing yourself to kind of new belief barriers and just changing your beliefs again and again and again. Like if you would have had told me 12 months ago, uh, said, you know, this is what you might, you will achieve in 12 months time. Like I don't, even though it's not much, I've only crossed, in my opinion, I've only taken my first step. But, you know, kind of seeing, if I would have seen myself 12 months ago, none of that's possible without belief. Yep. And I think that's something a lot of guys struggle with as well. Yeah. That will, and I'm no, you know, I'm no greater than anyone else. But I think if people change their beliefs on how they view things, how they view money, how they view other people and their skill sets, etc., I think belief is probably one of the most important kind of pieces of the puzzle that people need to kind of change. It's huge, and like, there's so many people that again go mindset's cringe. Mindset's cringe, right? No, nobody likes talking about mindset, mindset, blah, 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 blah. But the more you realize that your level of wealth will never exceed or your level of success will never exceed your level of personal development, mm. the more you put your focus and attention on it. And this is some free source the guys are watching. The more successful people that I've been around at the higher levels, the more I found they are more personal developed than anybody else. They're more self-aware, mm. they're more conscious, they're more educated, right? These guys, they read books, right? They yeah. read books all the time. They, they listen to podcasts. They swap out music for podcasts and they're always educating themselves. And a lot of people really put the wrong focus on, especially with making money online, the next thing, the next vehicle, the next shiny object thing, drop shipping, affiliate marketing, marketing agency, what's the next thing? The most core thing of where it starts, because something I've observed in Benji as well, is that it's the mindset. Mm. Right? As I spoke about very earlier on in the piece, it's like when I spoke to Daniel about you, he said the same thing. He, wants, he just wants to get after it, right? <laughs> and as funny as that sounds, that is the mindset that is required and that is what's needed, yeah. right? We've joked about this in the RSA and there's no word that I have for it that's better. I know it sounds cringy. I know it sounds bad, but he's got the dog in him, right? He's literally, it's just the best way I can explain it. It's, it's, a, it's a way of, it's a characteristic. It's a, it's a personality where you're waking up every single day with a literal hole in your chest of like, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this happen no matter what's going to get in my way. I'm going to keep running towards it. Because something that is really admirable, man, right? $30,000 invested into your training and education and mentors at your age is mind boggling. Mm. Absolutely mind boggling. Yeah, for sure. And that's what, you know, I think that's kind of, and people might not even believe me, but yeah, like that's true. I've invested 30K into, my, into myself over the past 12 months. And, you know, I see a lot of guys out there that are like, you know, don't even want to put $2,000 towards something that's going to save them three years of time. Yeah. It's like, dude, just pay the money. Like if it's going to get you there much faster, just pay the money. And also, like if you don't have the money, well, get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I, you know, it was no surprised that I invested that much is because I was literally doing 60 hour weeks again and again and again with one day off a month and did that multiple times. Yeah. You just got to like sacrifice that in the short term and make like trading time for money. Now I don't think it's a great thing at all. However, like if that's what you need to do in the immediate term to kind of make those investments, mm. just do it. <laughs> like go get the money. I couldn't agree more, man. Like becoming resourceful is a skill within itself. It's a thought process because a lot of people go, well, 
I don't have the money now. I can never do this. Mm. Whereas you can find ways to get the money. Like it, I just interviewed Saxon a couple of hours ago. Like for Christ's sake, he sold his car for half than it was actually worth to pay me to get in the training. Yeah. That's how desperate he was. That's how bad he wanted to fulfill his mission. Like that's yeah, exactly. how badly he wanted to succeed. Yeah, and right now I'm in the exact same process yep. of doing the exact same thing. Yep. So I've got a car that's worth, give or take, between fifteen dollars to $20,000. And in my mind now, I'm like, well, that can just go straight to more mentorship, more courses, more coaching, whatever that might be. Yeah. That's going to get me to that $30,000 a month even sooner. So in my mind, I'm like following the exact same thought process as Saxon. Like, if you've got those assets, just invest it into yourself because the end of the day, you're the one making the money. Mm. Like that's how kind of how I see it. Absolutely. I think, you know, the money's much better spent on yourself than it is anything else. The best way I like to view this and the best way I can explain this is that investing into yourself. And again, it may be a cliche thing that a lot of people have heard all the time because we see it on Instagram reels and YouTube and podcasts and things like that. But when you really pay attention to this, this can serve you the rest of your life. If you can invest, in, you, can, you can prioritize investing in yourself as an asset rather than anything else, rather than businesses, rather than S&P 500, rather than the stocks, bonds, crypto, things like that. When you can turn yourself into a machine, will you have the skills to build a business in the future or the skills to make the money that you want mm. to make? you're never gonna to have to worry about generating money ever again. Yeah. Because I talk about this, I mean, I've talked about numbers public on the channel before, but to build the skills that have enabled me to make six figures a month, what's allowed me to do that is the experience, the training, the mentorship with people that are significantly further ahead from me. Now, the thing is, now that Benji, he spoke about before, the milestone of 10K a month and why that's so important is because now that he's hit that, to go beneath that is really difficult mm. because not only do you have the skills to get there, you have the confidence, but like we spoke about before, you have the belief. And what I've seen generally across the board, having that financial threshold where it's really hard to get up that mountain, but once you've gotten over the mountain, you've seen it, you've touched it, you've felt it, it's incredibly difficult to go underneath that because again, like you've developed the belief and the skills to be able to attain that result. Because mm. you probably kind of felt, I'm not too sure, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but probably like a bit of a shift when you hit that milestone of like, oh, like, because now you're yeah. like, I want to hit $30,000 a month. Right? Yeah, exactly. So like, have you felt that shift? 100%. Like hitting that, and actually, I remember writing down my commissions and seeing how much it was for the month yeah. and then seeing that I finally crossed it. I was like, wow. And it's the shift it's a very good shift that happens. Like short term feels great. The next two days, like on top of the world. Like, yeah, finally, finally did it. All this work um, for however long it might have been. Uh, but, you know, actually experiencing it and knowing that you've done it once to do it again, like this month and then next month and next month. I have no doubt that if I just stick the process, remain consistent, that, you know, it's just going to get higher and higher and higher as time mm. goes on. Absolutely. And I'm really excited for you, man, because a couple of years, bro, I can tell <laughs> you're, you're a young gun. You're exactly like me, if not significantly ahead than I was when I was your age. And man, you've got the right mindset. You've got the right skills. And um, obviously, potentially in the future, you might be working with me again on looking at like developing more skills to start your own business in the future, which is really exciting. Yeah. I'm really looking for, for doing that extra support with the guys in the community. And what do you feel like has been the biggest differences, the biggest changes that you've made being a part of the RSA, the community, the training? Like what has your overall feedback been across the board from, from what you've seen? It's great. Like Connor's RSA community and course is exactly what you need if you're getting into sales and because he's he's gone through it he's been doing it for five years or even longer actually 
um, and just kind of going through that whole process, like there's no reason why you would not learn from him. Like he's eaten the shit for, you know, however long <laughs> he's gone through that. So then the experience I've got from it, like I'm starting to, like I'm going through the course again and again and again because the more I go through it, the more I realise, no, like this is literally just it. Like there's no other stuff, like just don't reinvent the wheel, just stay on the same page, keep going through it again and again and again. And until it clicks for you, like once you kind of realise and you learn the lesson that you need to learn, like there's no reason why you can't do the exact same thing. And like I'm proof of it, going through Connor's stuff, learning from him, getting mentorship off him and comp or not comp <laughs> comparing myself to people in the community that are above me, mm. are below me, seeing you know things they're doing and everyone learning from each other. It's the perfect environment that you want to be in to push yourself to that next level. And at the end of the day, sales is the forefront to every business. Without sales, you don't have a business. So it's an essential skill that I think everyone needs to learn anyway. I completely agree. Obviously, I'm pretty biased, but I completely agree. <laughs> and so what, walk the through guys through, because I mean, again, we, just, we touched on it briefly, but what are the massive changes for you knowing that you can now have a skill that you can make 10K a month with, right? Wherever you're at in the world, you can change time zones, you can do that type of stuff within reason. And again, you can go and plug yourself in any business and do that. Mm -hmm. What's that feel like in comparison to what you were doing before, working the hours, you work in the factory and the other jobs you worked in the past? Like, how has reality changed and shifted for you, do you think? Mm. I think reality is changed in just kind of the sense that, like, what I want, it's not that far away. Yeah. And, but with that being said, like, there's a lot of hard work that needs to be done to get to where you want to be. But realistically, in like my opinion, from the stuff that I've learned with, you know, people like yourself and people in those positions that you want to be, it's not all that much that kind of, it's just doing the work, to be honest. And I think my reality is just what I make it to be. As long as I just stick to the process. I, I love that, man. And we talk about this in the channel a lot uh, publicly, which is focusing on the inputs versus the outputs, yeah. right? Don't focus on what you get out, right? The magical result will come, 10K a month milestone will come, but focusing on the training, right? Uh, working with a mentor, asking questions, constantly working hard, practicing, like doing the, the stuff that's going to drive the result is really what everybody should be focused on. It's very often that I see that people are focused on the milestone, the top of the mountain, and that's why most people get so discouraged Mm -hmm. because inevitably it's not rocket science rocket science if you put in enough effort in enough time you will get to where you want to go inevitably even if you have the wrong strategy even if you're doing things incorrectly even if you're in the wrong vehicle you will get to where you want to go if you do the stuff long enough and a lot of people try to avoid that fact of actually doing the work because for you, what has that looked like over the last eight months of you just showing up day mm. in, day out? Like, what have you been doing? What have you been working on? How you been practicing skills? Like, yeah. what have you been doing during that time? During that time, like, honestly, learning everything there is to sales. Like, w working three different offers as well. Mm. Like, another thing I think a lot of people should do is work more offers. And, like, don't just stay in the same offer just because of the sake of it. Because... Yeah. Within every offer, even though the first two I didn't make any money, there are definitely things that I learnt in those offers that are crucial for me to know now and very valuable lessons and skills that I've learnt from those offers. And the more offers I work in, the more kind of my mind expands into, you know, business and just the skill set and what's actually required and what goes into the business and all that type of stuff. Uh, but, you know, just showing up daily and doing the cold calls, practicing for your closing calls, doing the training, and just having those inputs required every single day, eventually kind of you, you'll see it. Uh, and one thing as well uh, that I think you said was really good with the inputs, 
uh, versus outputs, actually staying consistent and consistency, in my opinion, with the whole sales and type stuff is probably the most important piece uh, because if you're not showing up every day and actually doing those inputs every single day, you know, if it's like 10 calls one day and then 100 the next and it's kind of a bit all over the place, yeah. the inputs, your kind of results are going to be very different into, you know, what if you were just to put those inputs in every single day and just stay consistent with it every day. And there's a lot of lessons within sales that kind of apply to it all, especially with health as well. Absolutely. And I, I've repeated this quote before, which is, uh, water doesn't break through rock or stone because of its power, but because of its consistency. Mm. And so having that ability to just constantly delay gratification, where you start at zero and you get nothing for a really long time, you need to be prepared to do it for this long, right? You need to be prepared to put in the work because inevitably, like I mentioned before, at some point, you're going to pay that industry tax. You're going to pay yeah. the high ticket sales tax, right? You're going to pay the making money online tax. You're going to fail, right? Regardless of whether you work a mentor or not or get the right strategy, you're going to mess up a bunch of times. It's just how it's going to happen. Yeah. You need to learn the lessons that you need to learn. Sometimes it takes longer for others. Sometimes it takes less than others. But a lot of the times, when you see these testimonies and case studies of guys that are crushing it in 30, 60, 90 days, 120 days, mm. it's usually the stuff that they've put up before the program and the program only ignited the fire with that. Yeah. Right. Generally, that's what I see. That's why I talk about six months to a year is a typical average range to be expected to be crushing it in this industry or at least making 10 to 15K a month Yeah, because you need to factor in that industry tax. You need to factor in, you might get a bad offer, yeah. right? You may not have any idea what you're doing at the start and you may mess up a bunch of times like I did, like Benji did, right? It's very normal. And you need to factor these things into play because so many people want things now, tomorrow, next week, yeah. this month. Because this is what we see on Instagram. We, we see all the, the hard, fast lifestyle. We see all the flashy stuff. And you'll see that on my Instagram as well. You'll see all the stuff. The, I mean, I don't like flexing or doing any lifestyle crazy stuff or anything like that. But I put it there because I know people are attracted to that. And that's why they buy into things. But at the end of the day, that's a highlight reel. right? You're seeing somebody's highlight reel. You don't see my 12, 14 hours a day. You don't see Benji's 12, 14 hours a day doing the boring shit that nobody cares about, that no one will see. And I've spoken about this in the past, but the, the law of accumulation, which is that any great success, especially financial success, is the greater large accumulation of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of small micro efforts and inputs and actions that nobody will ever, ever see. No one will appreciate it. Nobody will ever see behind the curtains. Nobody will ever see that. And that's why that consistency timeline is really, really important. Mm. And I like what you said about, you know, the Instagram, the flashy lifestyle and all that type of stuff. And I think that's, in my opinion, it's great to be exposed to, but also something that everyone should try and stay away from. Yeah. Like, for example, I actually made myself a promise about, it would have been 18 months ago, 24 months ago even, um, saying I'm going to delete all social media until I actually hit my target income that I want to make. As I read uh, Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week, and the target monthly income, $13,000, mm -hmm. was my desired income to do. Wow, that's so, so cool, man. That's awesome. Uh, wow. And, you know, if I want to hop on Instagram today, I can, I can do it. But basically, yeah. I removed myself from or social media and like cut a step back from that mm. and just made sure, well like all the education that I would get was purely just YouTube. And even staying away from that is good. I don't mm. think anyone should be on YouTube at all because it just turns into, you know, mental masturbation. You're just watching it for the sake of watching it and you're not actually getting anywhere yeah. unless you're actually putting in that kind of work. It's very easy to fall in that trap nowadays because it's information overload. There's 
thousands of people that are all saying the same thing about the same topic over and over and over again. Whatever you're studying, whatever you want to listen in, whatever you're curious about, there are so many people out there. There's infinite knowledge out there at your fingertips you can access, so it can become overwhelming, that's for sure. If you were to say something to somebody right now who's been watching a YouTube channel for a while, maybe they've been considering high ticket sales, maybe they've been considering the RSA, what would you say to somebody who's been sitting on the fence, do you think? Do it. <laughs> like seriously, just do it. Like you gotta, no one like wants to put in the work nowadays. Yeah. And if you are someone with that work ethic and you kind of, you know, look at certain things and go, oh, that's so far away or that's so hard. It's really not if you just have the right, you know, the right people, network, information in place to kind of get there. And I think people should just do it. Like everyone's getting caught up on a few thousand dollars, but at the end of the day, you know, if you spend that few thousand dollars and that in turn, like second order consequence, third, fourth, fifth order consequences later down the line, you know, you spend that and then next thing you know, six months later, you finally hit 10 grand a month. And then now that you've got that skill set in place, you know, you can kind of go into any business knowing sales and kind of look at the long-term kind of goals instead of just short-term thinking. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone that is sitting on the fence, like just do it. You're going to have to do it eventually. And if you don't, well, then you're just kind of not paying into that ignorance tax of, you know, what's actually out there because you're not making a million dollars a year. Well, you're not, you're not making, what's that quote? You're, um, every year that goes by, I'm going to completely make this up. Every year that goes by that you don't have the knowledge to make a million dollars a year, you are losing a million dollars a year. Exactly. And the opportunity cost that you have by not knowing the knowledge, information, the people that you need to know to make the money that you want to make, every year that goes by, not only are you losing the opportunity cost, you're losing the money, but you're also losing a resource that you can never get back, which is time. Exactly. Right? Time's not infinite. Money is. You can get as much money as you want, right? There's plenty of it out there in circulation. You can make as much money as you like, but you can always never rewind the clock. You can never go back in time. And Benji realizes that. I realize that. I'm young, right? Benji's younger, right? He's 20 now. I'm 23, turning 24 at the end of this year. There's no time to waste right? And the thing is that your journey, regardless of where you start, like you mentioned, is going to take time. Yeah. And so again, it comes back to that point, the more time that you waste, the second order consequences are going to get worse. Yeah. Right. Worse sure. and worse and worse by the month, by the year. For sure. And in my opinion, I genuinely think all it does take is like you said before, is six months to a year. I think that's all it really takes. Mm. If you, as long as you have the right knowledge the right mentor, the right people around you to kind of get there. Like it's just going to be six months of shit. But yeah. after that, like you're looking at much kind of brighter things and people just need to go, all right, look, I'm just going to do it. What I like to tell the guys, I'm sure you've heard this before, which is if you're going to eat shit, don't take small nibbles, take big bites. Yeah. We're all going to do it. Benji's done it. I've done it for a very long time right? Still do sometimes, right? Still eat shit, right? It's not fun, but you got to take big bites and you definitely need to not take little nibbles because so many people are inching closer to what they need to do and hesitating, but where you're going to find the results you're looking for is stepping into the unknown and doing the uncomfortable stuff that you ultimately know that you need to do anyway. If you were going to give one final note, one final remark for the guys watching, one lesson, one key thing you wanted to share with them, what would it be? Work harder, extend the time horizon of what you kind of think is expected. Like when I got into sales, I thought I was gonna to get to 10 grand a month in literally 10 weeks. Definitely not the case. You just need to be more realistic with it. Extend the time horizon further, spend more money on mentorships, courses, all that type of stuff. And just don't stop until you're there. Like don't give up and kind of be like, you know, oh, the world's going to end because you haven't achieved X, Y, or Z. But just keep like pushing through and making sure you're doing, you're just showing up every single day and just putting in those inputs that's actually required. And then the goal will just eventually come. Brilliant advice. 
Very good to finish that off. Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that interview. Hopefully you got some value, some lessons, you got some nuggets from that. I um, always like to try to provide value from the guys that are doing this in the trenches with you, right? Obviously, I'm still technically in the trenches, but not actually within the high ticket sales industry as of present moment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, thanks, brother, for coming on. No, it's so good. And uh, we will see you in the next one.